First of all, if you navigate to your Chrome, so Google Chrome, top right hand corner where your name is, if you click on manage your Google account, from there go to security which is on the left hand side and then scroll down until you see two step verification, it must be switched on. Now we're going to nip into app passwords, put your password in for this account, for your own account. Once you're signed in, it gives you the opportunity to add an app. So we will select other and we'll name it Epson Scanner MFP. Call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Generate your password. There's your password. Now we need to keep a note of this, so copy it. Um, put, your IP, uh, put your IP address of your photocopier in. Uh, we need to sign as administrator. Okay, just barging in here at this point because I forgot to mention how to get the IP address of your Epson machine. So scroll along till you get to settings and then general settings. From general settings, network settings. And then scroll to the bottom and go to advanced. Now TCP IP is set for auto, which means it's allocated by DHCP from your router. Basically your router that you've got at home or at work um, in most cases, will be allocating all your devices on the network and IP address. So when you plug it into the network, um, whether it's by cable or you've done it wirelessly, which you put an SSID in uh, and then a password, the machine will then get allocated its own IP address from your router or stroke server in a bigger environment. So if you press it, it gives you the IP address. It is greyed out because it is set for automatically. So if it wasn't automatic, it, this would be highlighted in blue but you can just make up the IP address of 192.168.1.161. Obviously, yours might be different. It's just the way mine's set up on my router. So to do that, uh, if it's the first time you've done this, it'll prompt you to create an account, uh, depending on the model, obviously, they're all different. So I'll just sign in. Once signed in, we need to navigate to network and under email server, click basic. There we go, just a bit slow. Right, at this point is in, you turn it on, SMTP authentication, the account, which would be my email address, my Gmail email address, the password that you've just taken from here. So you copy this and paste it in. So control V and the sender's email address. Now, I do suggest that you use the same as your, your email address, as your sender's address. Because if you're creating additional email addresses um, to send to, to send documents to, it's possible that the person who's receiving the email address may see it, the system may see it as spam. So if you send it as your, same as your, your email address, then you shouldn't have an issue. Um, the mail server for Gmail is this, smtp.gmail.com, and the port is 465 and we will choose SSL. Once that's done, just click OK. Give it a sec to uh, save those settings. Once that's done, we'll do a connection test. And at the bottom, we click Start. And this basically just connects to the mail server, just touches it just to see if it's working. You do a full test by sending an email, which we're, we're going to do next. Setting up a, an email address on the Epson C5790. Um, touch the display, bring it out of sleep. Go to settings. Scroll down until you see contact manager. Register. Add an entry. Add a contact. If it's an email. The name of the person, as an example, test, and assign to frequent use, so it goes into your favourites, and add the email address, test at test.com. OK, OK, that's done. So when you're at the home screen, you press scan, an email, you'll see test has been created. 
So I'm just going to go in and delete that now, actually. Settings. Contacts Manager. Registers and Delete. Um, press de Oh, I need to find it first. So I'll go across here to the tab of T for Test. And Delete. That's it. Now I'll do it on the web interface. Right, uh, let's add an email address to the to the photocopier through the web interface. Okay, so um, if you navigate to the administrator login, put in your admin details, and navigate to the scan copy tab to contacts. And you'll notice here we've got a bunch of free ones because I've cleared them first. So if you want to add an email address, you would choose which one you want and then just click edit. Change this from fax to email. Put in the person's name. Index would be T. If it was me, as in John, I would put J in there. Frequent uses for your favourites and then you would put in your email address. And then once done, press apply and that's you physically added your email address to the web interface of the machine. Right, okay, um, now we're going to scan a document via email. So documents in the document feeder on the top. I'll zoom in so you can see the display. Here we go. So press scan. Choose the email, choose your email address that we've just programmed, press send. So you can actually see the document getting processed. It hasn't sent at this point, but it will tell you when it's done. Here we go. Right, a couple of options on this model, might as well cover them. Document in, choose your name, scan settings. You can choose, you can change the defaults on the machine through the web interface that we've just done, but you can choose black and white color, the format. These are just one off, so we'll go back to the defaults. You can see it's on as PDF as default. Uh, resolution can be dropped or increased. Uh, I think actually it's already on 200, yeah, that's a minimum, highest at 600. Uh, whether you're going to scan double sided or not, so if there's two-sided document and um, further down density adjustments make it a little darker uh, what else have we got really that's interesting so you can change the name so you can go in and, and give it a name basically so you can call it whatever you like so you can call it test if you like so press OK and then press send so Renaming it test means when the email comes in with the document, it is called test. Here we are. Right, okay, back at the PC. Uh, excited to find out whether or not my scanty email is working properly. So we'll navigate to my inbox, and there is the two emails that we sent just a few moments ago. Uh, one is called test and the other one is not and I don't know if you remember that I prefixed uh, one with the word test and it does seem to have a bunch of numbers afterwards which probably is the is the date along with the a document number say so let's have a look at the first one yep there we are uh, just the maintenance test sheet just testing the actual print head and the second one was me resending it again but I sent it in black and white instead and renamed it well prefixed it with test. Now a couple of settings that you can change as default on this model on the C5790. You can once you're logged in as admin here we go. Let's log in as admin and if we navigate to the scan and copy tab and choose this scan to email option, you'll notice that you've got a bunch of options on here. So attach file max size basically set for 5 meg. You can put this one up to 30. Some machines out there don't have a limit on them and it's all restricted by 
I am the the mail server that's receiving the emails but you're probably safe a maximum of 30 I would say um, I generally when I'm installing these machines is max them out to 30 and I've never nobody's ever contacted me to say they're having a problem sending emails to an email address so 30 meg um, is fine obviously if you send a lot of documents you, if you make it black and white just reduce the file size which is a bonus especially if you don't need it in color and the re the resolution as it stands at the moment is 200 if it lifted it to 3 makes the file size a little bit bigger when you're scanning to email um, but obviously if you jump it to 600 that becomes a bit of a problem if you're sending a lot of documents at once to that one email address so I find mostly 300 is fine so I'm going to change the defaults now to 300 um, but that's it so uh, hopefully this uh, video has been useful to you